I don't have a whole lot of experience in Hollywood accounting other than to know that it's a thing. But I wonder if part of the reason why they keep naming him so much is just the concern that the money anywhere else might run away. Uh, it's not just it's not just that it could run away. <clears throat> I'll tell you from doing judgment execution here in New York, you you always want an earner. It's better yeah. than someone with a deep, not just a deep pocket, but a deep pocket that's going to keep generating revenue. Because instead of having to try to find a bank account, you can attach the assets directly from their source of revenue. So this way, you basically go, they can go to Universal or whoever it is that's going to hire him next and say, yeah, that, that contract he signed with you for $6 million, well, he owes us 40 So we're going to be attaching all of that. Or yeah. certainly, depending on the state, some states won't allow you to attach all of it. We're going to be attaching you know, X percentage of it. And this way, they know that they're going to be able to keep getting it. If it's a studio, which is especially a small-time studio like these sound, seem like they are, well, who knows if you know they're going to fold up the day after the judgment gets entered and say, okay, we can't pay this off. We're filing bankruptcy. Yeah. So And we'll just start a new studio tomorrow. So... Yeah. This way, this way, they have a name like a solid name that they feel confident is going to keep earning, you know, from their perspective, hopefully for decades to come, and that they can, and not just earning, but earning, you know, seven digit, seven digit checks, which will, you know, do go a long way towards satisfying a judgment if they should, you know, when, when, if and when they succeed in obtaining one. The only, I mean, other... assuming that this complaint isn't just high octane BS, and I don't think that it is but uh assuming that it isn't i think they're gonna get some uh some money sent their way yeah i i definitely think so the only the only part that i that we haven't really touched on here um which i think is is probably going to play an important role is the insurance um not not knowing what their insurance policies were you know how how those max out um, I, I would be, I would be very curious to see what those insurance policies look like, um, uh, because that, that is probably going to really impact how much they can collect as well. I'm sure, I have a what, feeling what, that what, this isn't <clears throat> one of those ones that settles for policy limits though. Yeah. It's going to, I think this is going to go beyond and that's why they want to go up to Baldwin because yeah. they want to, because if I think the policy limits, if it's like 5 million, I mean, how much more than that would it possibly be? I don't. Th I think that they're gonna. I, I don't think they'll just say, oh, "Okay, we'll take the five million and settle uh, and sign a waiver on the rest." I don't think they'll do that. I think they'd mm -hmm. rather win and get a judgment far next to that, then collect yeah. that money the, the, off the top from the insurance company. Um, you know, a lot of times the way it happens in your normal accident when you have a, you know, a when I say normal, I mean typical run of the mill individual like you or me. You know, uh, if we're or some client that comes into us. You know, so when you, so when you get offered the policy with that, they say, okay, take the policy and sign a waiver that you're done and there's no further claim. And you sort of figure, okay, how much am I going to get from this defendant anyway? How much money do they have? It's not someone Alec Baldwin who shoots them. Think about this That's for a second. True. That's <laughs> true. If this is some low budget film where there's really no major actors, there's no money in the in the company that's at least known to exist there and now you get offered a policy where you recognize hey if i go to court and i get a judgment against them what the hell is that going to be worth and maybe i'm not going to get the judgment so you have those concerns so you say to yourself you know what let me grab the five million max policy and i'll get and, and go my merry way because that's all i'm ever going to get from this but because you have a deep pocket here and he's so directly involved in this accident and so in a, in a myriad of ways that I think that, yeah, even if they offer the policy, if they say, here's the policy, sign the waiver, they say, screw that. We're not signing any waiver. We're going to get more than that. We're going to so. get your policy and whatever you got in your pockets. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. That's that's but, that's, a, that's a very good point. I think one thing that you guys are for, uh, well, maybe you guys have said that because I, I went to the restroom. But um, in Hollywood, if you're an actor, the you have to be able to get insured, to set insured. So if you're an actor that has a lot of these, these things, you can't get the insurance. You can't get what they call it, bonded. I forget the, the technical term they have. And if you can't get the insurance, you can't work. So I think his issue is also, <clears> too, <throat> if he's going to do any other films or any other projects, he's mm. not going to be able to do it because he's not, you know, what insurance company is going to insure him after taking a $5 million hit, it's going to be less likely. I don't know if they would say, think, put yourself in the shoes of an insurance company. You think they would be afraid that he's going to, like, kill someone again? 
by accident that they would be a, a, they wouldn't take the insurance money. It's not like he's some it's not like he's some you know one one and done type of actor. This guy's been doing this for for thirty five years. He's been acting. So it, I think that they I think you know they might ja I'm sure they'll jack up his rates, but you know as far as the, him being uninsurable, I don't know if that's really going to play for for Ale for Alexander R. Baldwin the third. So yeah, that's true. But I, but I refuse to call him Alec. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed. Alec, you need to add the third so, each time. Yeah, Alexander the third. The third. Pick it out, Alexander the third. <laughs> Born asshole. <laughs> out of the womb, you're an asshole. <laughs> Uh, oh man i mean that's yeah that that's that's possible i mean so either either he'll he'll have a hard time getting insurance or it's just going to be incredibly expensive i wonder if he's just not going to make films after that because i mean he also so i mean here's here's another another possibility joe is that um you know for for whatever work he does in the future or he was planning on doing in the future what if he just decides i'm not going to work anymore i'm retiring I have i have enough that's right? why he's, yes that's why, as a judgment execution, when you're executing the judgment, if you, if that's the case that they enable you to take it, in normal wages, like in New York, <clears throat> the normal the way wages work is you can only seize ten percent of a person's salary. So if I'm trying to execute judgment, <clears throat> excuse me, if I'm trying to execute a judgment against somebody in New York, basically, and I find their employer, so I I would I would attach it directly from the employer. And I would take 10% off of the top. Well, let's say he, the person in another judgment, someone else already did that. I don't get anything. That 10% goes to whoever came first until they get satisfied. It's really a race to see. And it varies dramatically, dramatically from one state to another as to how execution works. And mm -hmm. also when it comes to execution, if they get this judgment in, in New Mexico, they're going to have to have a follow-up entry in california if they want to execute in his work in california or if he goes to new york each state you need to take the judgment and get it entered there and every state will have different guidelines for how it is that you can um that that, that you can uh execute and seize the assets in florida if he moves to florida which by the way if you're alex if you're alexander r baldwin the third you should take a primary residence in Florida. The reason, uh, or Texas. Not legal I, advice. I'll tell you. And I, yes, I mean, yes, yes. No, this is legal advice. You should. You know, I'm, he's I'm not bald right lawyer. now. I'll tell you right now. There are some states that they make it nice and easy to to execute judgment. In Florida, it is impossible. I don't know how any judgment execution company survives in Florida. If you're the primary earner for your family, the judgment creditor gets to execute zero nothing your house your if it's your primary residence is protected there's literally there's no way to get anything that's why judge that's why trump i think is living in florida he knows anyone gets judgment against him there's no way you, you can't attach anything there's nothing you can go after it's like hmm. find the money in his pockets i don't know i don't know what you're supposed to do i don't, know how, how, I don't OJ. know how they do it there yeah oj you, flew his ass to florida it, it's 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 actually called in, in the in the industry. It's actually known as as, as debtors' haven because people just huh. flock down there. And maybe that's why a lot of old people move down there. They all maybe. got judgments <laughs> against them, and they're like, "Hey, <laughs> <laughs> this is better." Yeah, see, yeah, I'm gonna go to Florida. I'm totally safe. I'm totally safe down there. So yeah, that's it's a big factor 